Thank you so much for providing us with the opportunity to present our work at this virtual SAGES meeting. It's unfortunate that we were unable to gather in person this year, but these are obviously unprecedented times. My name is Zishan, and I'm a minimally invasive and bariatric fellow from the University of Toronto. Today, I'll be presenting an abstract assessing the quality and training initiative as it relates to the general surgery program at two academic hospitals in downtown Toronto. I have nothing to disclose relating to this presentation. The National Surgical Quality Improvement Program is a large outcomes database established by the American College of Surgeons to measure risk-adjusted outcomes of surgical interventions between hospitals. This allows for unbiased comparison of results between hospitals of different sizes that serve different patient populations. NISQIP was born in the mid-1980s from a United States government mandate to improve surgical outcomes among veteran administration hospitals because of high rates of mortality and surgical complications. The United States Congress enacted a legislative act for the development of a risk adjustment model to account for patient complexity to enable apple-to-apple -apple comparisons of results from participating hospitals. By mandate, all VA hospitals were required to participate. By adopting this model, they were able to reduce morbidity and mortality in the Veterans Administration system by 45 and 27 percent, respectively. The American College of Surgeons adopted NISCRIP and tested the model in a small number of academic medical centers and private hospitals. By 2004, the VA results were validated and ACS NISCRIP was adopted and implemented at the national level. How does the model work? NISCRIP is based on over 100 variables collected preoperatively and up to 30 days postoperatively. The variables are collected from five categories, patient demographics, surgical profile, preoperative, intraoperative, and postoperative data. The collection of variables is performed by a surgical clinical reviewer trained by NISQIP in the analysis of medical records. The surgical clinical reviewer is audited yearly to ensure reliability. The strength of this system lies in the validation of risk adjustment and strict definitions of complications, which range from overall mortality to surgical site infections. The selection of patients is done randomly. Patient participation for data collection is not voluntary, but answering any follow-up questions is completely voluntary. The Quality and Training Initiative was established in 2011 as a multidisciplinary collaborative of academic affiliates of NISCRIP to support the dissemination of surgical best practices. It uses the NISCRIP platform but also gathers resident level patient outcomes for use in surgical education. What additional data is collected? In addition to all the data traditionally gathered by NISCRIP, the clinical reviewers also gather information regarding the most senior trainee participating in the operation. They also gather their postgraduate year and feedback from patients postoperatively. In this way, ACS NISCRIP data can be manipulated to provide standardized reports for use in surgical education. The initiative has been established to foster an environment across surgical programs where a quality improvement conscience is at its core. Having this in mind, we analyzed QITI data using descriptive statistics for general surgery procedures between 2013 in 2018 to assess the risk-adjusted association of trainee participation and surgical outcomes at two academic hospitals in downtown Toronto. We evaluated a total of 12,531 cases. Overall, resident participation was 63%, with the majority of involvement among senior trainees in postgraduate years 3 through 5. Resident participation was common in indexed general surgery cases such as laparoscopic appendectomies, cholecystectomies, hernia repairs, and bowel resections. Trainees were also involved in more advanced cases such as liver resections, pancreatic duodenectomies, and laparoscopic bariatric procedures. Obviously, one limitation of this analysis is the notion that the presence of a resident trainee in the operating room does not always correlate with participation. There are no reliable metrics to assess resident knowledge, judgment, or technical performance. Keeping track of this data, however, can be especially important as training programs shift to promotion based on competency-based learning. 
in large training programs such as the one we have at University of Toronto, given the large number of residents and specialized training hospitals, having objective information on resident caseloads may provide for a more equitable resident distribution amongst hospitals to ensure trainees are meeting all their training objectives. It can also serve as a metric to assess for trainees who require additional support, mentorship, or remediation. Other findings from our analysis show that emergency cases were more common for resident participation. This is likely a result of their workup of these patients and involvement during call shifts. Interestingly, there was no significant difference in mean operative time. Now, this could be associated with surgical trainees being more proficient assistants, or the notion that staff surgeons tend to be more swift during the portions of the case they are involved in, to keep the procedure on pace when trainees are involved. Finally, cases where resident participation had higher rates of 30-day complications, but not mortality. This is obviously significant for training programs when balancing surgical education and outcomes for patients. Keeping track of this information can be powerful in providing feedback to surgical trainees. Surgeons who wish to provide high-quality care need to be trained to think critically and perform self-assessment on a regular basis in order to create a culture of continuous quality improvement. Traditionally, outside of surgical morbidity and mortality conferences, there have been no objective methods for surgical trainees to keep track of their outcomes. Overall, QITI information can provide an effective means to extrapolate resident participation, enhance competency-based training, and allow for improved mentorship and feedback for surgical residents and training programs in general. QITI data may help foster a culture of continuous self-assessment of surgical outcomes and allow for quality improvement to be at the core of one's conscience. Given this proven ability to improve surgical outcomes and initiate positive changes in patient care, it is necessary for more institutions to participate in ACS and ISCRIP and incorporate QITI data not only in general surgery training programs, but all specialty programs. The accrued information through QITI has the potential to assist in making meaningful changes in surgical education. Sages, thank you once again for allowing us to present our work at this virtual conference. God bless and stay safe.